My name is Rebecca with Button Makers, and today I'm going to show you how to design and print a button for free using Photopea. That's P H O T O P E A dot com. It's a free uh, alternative to Adobe Photoshop, and it's really freaking cool. If you're not using Photopea, uh, and you don't have Photoshop, you should definitely come over to photop.com and use this uh, application. Our uh, free downloadable templates for Photoshop work great in it. Well, they work okay. <laughs> There's a couple of weird little quirks, uh, which I will go ahead and show you now. So first of all, you want to go to buttonmakers.net and click on the design templates link and download the zip file for Photoshop. So the Photoshop files on buttonmakers.net contain uh, two files. You've got one that is um, for designing a button and then another for a page layout. Uh, and you want to download the one that's appropriate to the size button maker that you have. So I did that already. I'm making a one and a half inch button today. I'm going to click on, I'm going to go to photop.com, which opens up this page right here, which just looks like basically like Photoshop. It's cool. Uh, and then I'm going to go to file open. <clears throat> And uh, 150.psd is the file for a one and a half inch button. So I'm going to open that up. And first, I'll go ahead and introduce you to the various components of this template. This template was made in Adobe Photoshop, made in and for Adobe Photoshop. So a couple of the features in here um, are a little wonky in Photo P, but it works for the most part. So it's great. Um, first of all, you've got uh, the face line, which indicates where, like the edge of the front of the button. So everything inside of here shows up on the face of your button. The a button is a three-dimensional object, so you've got a side and then the back as well. The back gets pretty much hidden underneath the pin back, and then the side or the perimeter of the button is right here, um, where we have a couple of text layers, which is where you might put... Um, uh, like a copyright or a URL to a website, something very, very small and simple and easy to read. You do not want to go any bigger with this text or it'll get cut off or start migrating onto the face of your button. Um, and you don't want to use any weird fonts because it's already really difficult to read. Uh, it's got, these layers have a stroke on them so that it shows up on a variety of different backgrounds that may or may not be, um, you know, something you want, depending on what, it de just depends on what background you have it against. So like a plain red background might not be the best thing, but if you had a textured patterned background or something like that, you might need the stroke. That's why it's there. Um, the cut line, you want to always leave that on. It's got a vertical uh, line here for cutting columns, strips of paper, so that you can fit your button graphics through a ProMaker punch. It's got a round cut line here, which shows you where to cut your circles. Uh, those are very important, so leave those alone. But you always want to turn this face line layer off before printing, otherwise it will show up on your finished buttons, which makes Rebecca cry. Um, all right, so you got your perimeter text. You've got two uh, rounded text layers in here. These use the text along a path feature. There are paths, a whole bunch of them loaded into this file already. You've got a face line, like all the circles basically are in here. Um, I've kind of cut off the bottom of uh, my screen, but you've got some, you can, you can duplicate these layer, these paths. You can uh, move them around, do all kinds of fun stuff with them if you need to change the positioning of, a, of any of the stuff. Um, a, in this case, a path is just like an invisible shape, essentially. And for this purpose, it's used to um, adhere, like it's the baseline for the type. So that we've got, so it's like text along a path. So it's rounded text. We don't need to use, it makes like a perfect circular type as opposed to like doing a warp or some kind of layer effect, which doesn't give you a perfect circle typically. So that's why I use that. It's a little more flexible too. Um, so we've got those layers. We've got a logo 
and a shape just loaded in here just to kind of show you you know what you can do we're going to go ahead and start modifying this so i'm going to turn those off um, this is just the background layer it's just a red circle um, you can uh, do whatever you want with this background um, i have it stopped right here at the bleed line because um, laser printers don't like toner in this area <laughs> button machines don't like laser print toners in this area it causes sometimes this weird mylar bubble it's best just to stop your graphics right here if you're using an inkjet printer that doesn't apply to you but if you're sending your prints to a photo lab not a photo lab like a print shop or something like that it's best practice just to leave an area of white between the bleed and the cut just trust me <laughs> um so i want to make this background black and here are my colors over here uh, in photo p so the easiest way to do that is just to click on your color picker i think i clicked the background so i'm gonna click on the foreground color and select a color and you could do you could do like whatever color you want in this case we're going with black okay um then i'm going to click on my paint bucket which if you don't see your paint bucket it is hiding behind the gradient tool this is a lot like photoshop photoshop does the same thing with the hiding of the tools um, and then you just click in here and this makes like a really jagged edge. That's gross, but, um, that gets cut off. So I'm just gonna leave it. I'm going to go ahead and modify my perimeter text layer. So I'm going to click in here and then click control a on my keyboard. If you're on a Mac, that's command a, and then I'm going to change the color of the type using the type options up here at the top. Let me change it to white. And of course, I don't also need a white stroke on it anymore. Um, and then I'm also going to just I'm just going to put my web address there. Uh, let's see if we have character. Okay, so here's some um, character options in photo p you can do some size some tracking with that i gotta select the type to make those changes okay so that's like kerning so that's a good that's a good thing to notice for um for doing perimeter text um putting space between your uh, letters is pretty key. Um, also doing text along a path too, because a lot of times if you, especially these, um, when the baseline uh, is, <laughs> I don't know how to say this, sometimes doing a circular type like squishes your text together. And so you do need to know how to put some extra kerning or tracking in between the letters sometimes to make it legible. So. Um, All right, so I'm gonna do that on this layer too. I'm gonna make it white, okay. I'm going to take off the stroke and I'm going to put the tracking out a little bit. Cool, all right. Uh, now I'm going to um, place a picture on my button. So to do that, you can't drag stuff around in Photo P the way you can in a lot of programs. Um, so to do this, you have to click open and place rather than just open and click on your picture and click open. Now, um, when you drag, when you put photos in to button templates, a lot of times they're actually huge compared to your button. Like this is just a one and a half inch button. I grabbed this photo off the internet, so it's pretty small too, but a lot, like if you grab, got it off of a digital camera, it would be absolutely huge. You'd only see like a teeny tiny part of it. You wanna just size down your pictures, um, you know, to be correspondent to uh, like a one, and a half, you know, like a one inch or three and a half is like the biggest size. Um, so anyway, so if it's huge, just size down. <laughs> just go to edit, transform, scale, uh, or edit, free, transform. And I still have a path selected, so I'm gonna click escape on my keyboard and come into my path palette. See, I have the rounded text bottom path selected. I'm just gonna click underneath here to unselect that path. 
and then I'm going to go back to my layer. So it had my path selected. When I went to edit, transform, <coughs> excuse me, I thought I wanted to transform that path, but I don't. I want to transform the layer. So I had to unselect that path. Okay. I'm going to hold my, so now I have the handles on the sides of my pictures, right? My, rather than anything else. And I'm going to hold my shift and alt keys down and that will maintain my center point as well as the aspect ratio of my picture while I am dragging it around. Uh, I want to do that so that it doesn't stretch out my people or make them too, you know, fat or too skinny. Maintaining the aspect ratio is important. Um, Next, I'm going to select my ellipse select tool and hold down my shift key and make a circle and then I'm going to move the circle uh, approximately where I want it. And then I'm going to click the layer mask option here at the bottom, which is conveniently cut off. But believe me, there's these little buttons down here at the bottom. Um, to duplicate layers and to put layer masks on and layer effects and all that good stuff. It's down here at the bottom of your layers palette. You can kind of see the top of it right here, but that's the, that made a mask. So it like is hiding whatever I color black will hide on this layer. And then whatever's colored white on the mask will show this layer. <clears throat> you can unselect this picture from its mask on Link It using this little thing here and then click on the picture and grab the move tool and move it around inside the mask, just like Photoshop is very convenient. This is actually great um, and pretty much spot on perfect where I want it, but a little bit. So I relinked those two and then I moved them together. All right, so now I'm going to change the top text. I'm gonna select all of it here and type in what I want it to say instead. I'm going to click, select the move tool just to un, to get myself out of the text modification thing. Um, and then I've been having trouble with this layer. Yeah, so for whatever reason, when I click on the button makers layer, it just disappears. Um, but it does still let me type here. So I'm gonna, start typing. So I grabbed my, I had my path selected and now I grab my tech type tool and it's allowing me to type something new. So button makers, the layer for whatever reason, photo P doesn't like it, but uh, it's letting me do a new one along a path. So that's fine. All right. So this is not placed well, as you can see, it's like way over here. Um, to fix that, you select the path selection tool and you can click on one of these little dots here and just move it around. You can see if I move it out here, it, goes, it, it changes, makes it upside down, makes the baseline on the outside of the path. And if I put it here, I like drag inside the path, it puts it inside. Um, okay. Make this a little smaller now again because I don't want it to cut off my F. Again, holding the shift and alt keys down. <laughs> All right, I uh, am happy with this design. I'm going to turn off my face line layer and save this. And then I'm going to lay out a page. So I'm going to go to edit, define new pattern. Excuse me. And then I'm going to open up my new, I'm going to go to file open and open up my page layout. <coughs> All right. So the instructions layer in this document pertain to Photoshop. So uh, just turn that off. It doesn't really give you instructions properly for photo P. It's a little different here. So turn off that layer and then go to layer and new layer fill pattern fill. 
drop down your little pattern selection here and click on the pattern you just made, not that one with the face line. I'm so embarrassed. Okay, that one, <laughs> the most recent one. All right, um, and that's it. We have just laid out uh, an, an eight by 10 or eight and a half by 11 letter size page with a whole bunch of uh, graphics for print. You wanna save this out as a, a PDF um, before you can actually print it, but you can easily do that. And then once you have that, you can either take that to like a print shop or you can queue it right up to your printer. Let's click print. And here um, you wanna just make sure it's scaling 100%. Do not scale to fit or use the default settings, which are usually scaling to fit. Do not scale your pictures down. You want to make sure that they are 100%. Otherwise, your button graphics will all be the wrong size. And that won't be good at all. So 100%, don't um, scale anything. And check your default settings for that as well. And then just click print. And then you can start pressing buttons. Thanks so much for watching. Um, Feel free to reach out if you have any questions and uh, go support Photopea. That program's awesome. Thank you.